Hey, Ellie. It has been a great day so far. Thank you. You too. Where are you located? Hey, Daisy. Hi, Todd. Oh, Utah, nice. Is it pretty hot there right now? <clears throat> I know we've had crazy weather like everywhere. Heather, not Todd. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to remember that. It's funny, this time of year, all we really talk about is the heat. <clears throat> Dry heat is definitely a world of difference than, there should be another word for humid heat. It, it gets pretty, it gets pretty rough. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Soraya. Hi, Indigo. Daisy, remind me where you're from again. I'm just, I know it's well north of here because we were worried about the cold. One of the M months, I think. <laughs> Hi, Gail, I got your picture. Michigan, see? Yeah. Somebody was saying that even in the UK, they were having really unseasonable cold and wet summers. Hi, Mary. Thank you. Hey, Zoe. Oh, this is great. I wonder if Dave's going to show up. He sent me an email. He's in our Facebook group. Just in case you guys don't know and you're on Facebook, we have a group and it's a really nice group. There's a lot of like just some of the plant groups online are, um, they can get pretty, uh, I don't know, pretty nasty sometimes, but um, we've never had that problem in our group. There was one tiny little misunderstanding one time, but it's a uh, sucks for, it's Facebook uh, groups, sucks for you, sucks talk. Love to have you guys there. And that way you can send pictures and stuff. I know a lot of y'all aren't on social media and, and you know, stick to YouTube. Um, you can always email me. Um, my email is on my website at sucksforyou.com, but it's real easy. It's get, G-E-T, at sucksforyou.com. So if you want to send me any pictures, you have any questions, um, kind of working on a formula for, you know, how to answer as many questions and see all your plants on the YouTube live streams. Um, Right now we don't have a particular topic, but maybe we can do more uh, focused chats. Um, I mean, I'm thinking right now, if we wanted to, if we wanted to pick a topic, we could do that, <laughs> or a couple different topics. Heather says we're newbies with cultivating succulents because of your videos. Um, I have a lot of people tell me like, it's all your fault. I have so many succulents now. And I'm like, I'll take that blame <laughs> happily. No, oh, Daisy asked about thrips on, on cactus. And um, thrips are actually just these little critters, uh, I don't know the, the actual scientific name, I think it's referring to a lot of different things, but um, my experience with thrips has been when I'm sitting under a tree and I'll feel like this tiny little annoying bite. And um, they're so small, they're so small. Um, I've never noticed any issues with thrips on cactus or succulents, Not that, I mean, but I do think they're just so small if they do any damage to them, um, it's probably minimal. Okay, Indigo, keep an eye out for a live ops live stream. Love to have you back. Um, Sheila in West Texas says, 
West Texas has been getting an unusual amount of rain and flooding. Actually, I've noticed that uh, I follow a big Ben group on Facebook. It's like Terlingua Big Ben Marathon, something like that. It's a long name. So I really love it there and um, kind of get to these nice reminders um, of what's going on out there when I can't be there. What are some tips to keep outside succulents from rotting? So you're referring to when succulents have, a, um, first of all, we're not used to a lot of rain. This is also happening in California right now. I was talking to someone in Sacramento. Um, they get a lot of rain when they're not used to it, and then the sun comes back out, and it's really hot all of a sudden afterwards. Um, they're not um, acclimated to that kind of, you know, flux in the weather and the conditions. Um, and it does cause them to freak out. If you can move, of course, you want to try and keep your succulents dry, but um, in that, in, you know, not let them get too dry or too wet for too long. But in that instance, if you're if you can move them to a shadier spot, or even just, you know, if if they're in the ground or you can't move the pot, um, you can put something in front of it, some, just something like a chair. You know, put something to block that direct sun at the time of day and until the weather returns to normal for the area. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, I forgot there was something else that reminded me of, I'm going to think about it. Gail, I think everybody or most people has a uh, trouble with a jelly bean. She says she has trouble with the leaves falling off. Same. Um, not yeah, not just like the jelly beans. Uh, what are those Senecio rowellanus or something? Um, but also with the burrow's tail, same here. Um, Gail, remind me where you're located. I'm gonna look back real quick. Okay, so Pennsylvania. I mean, that's the that climate there. You're. And I think, you know, right now you guys have been getting a lot of rain, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I'm sure it's lovely at certain times of year. A lot of rain um, not and a lot of humidity, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there's this awesome group on Facebook called Plant Shame. And the, um, the admin is from around the, the Philly area. And I was just looking up to see what the weather was like. And it looks like, yeah, you guys were getting a lot of rain. Um, so yes, to answer your question, I do consider them harder. Um, I would start with the best luck I've had with jelly beans where I'm from is just actually in the ground, believe it or not. Um, just kind of torturing them. But, uh, after a while when it, when it hit like peak summer here, they, they weren't looking so hot, but they did really well for you know, most of the year. This is west facing sun outside. It was getting rained on, you know, no matter, you can baby them all you'd like, but if the conditions where you're from um, aren't ideal, you're gonna get a lot of drop. Uh, the bros tills, same thing. And I do, I think it has to do with the humidity. Um, circulation, like air circulation, being able to like move, move the uh, moisture away from the plants and then, um, Yeah, they, they, they supposedly they're not supposed to have like full direct sun. So I don't know. There's just all these different things involved. It all comes down to where you live like and what you're dealing with. But don't worry. They are tricky. They, I have never really had a ton of luck with any of them, Gail. <laughs> um, Georgia asked, I have a question on my Echeveria. Losing a lot of bottom leaves. <clears throat> I took them off, but now I have a long naked stalk. Can I just cut it off and plant directly in dirt without watering? Well, sure, go ahead, but you wanna put it in dry dirt. Um, you should also go ahead and give the cut in, let it dry out for a few days. Ideally, you're gonna let that cut in dry out until there's like a, a scab, a callus over it. Um, and then you can put that into dry dirt and then it'll start making roots and then you can start watering it. Like 
like slowly. So that's the, that's the safest way to avoid like root rot on your stem cuttings. And then you can also, Georgiana, leave that, uh, leave the base in like potted somewhere. It doesn't have to be in that pot. You can move it somewhere else. Um, and then it should start uh, creating new growth on the on the stem that's still planted. So, yeah, two for one special there. And they don't come straight out the top. The new growth on a succulent that you top kind of branches. I have some examples. Um, kind of hard to get to right now, but I'm sure you guys have seen that before. Dave, I saw your picture. Hold on, I have it right here. Let me see if you guys can see it. And I'm sorry if there's any background noise that every now and then there's like a wood chipper or something that starts up in my air conditioning vent. Um, when I did the test yesterday, it was cooler out. The AC was off. It was perfectly quiet. Even the birds were quiet. It's like they know when I'm trying to go live, just everything around me. Uh, Dave's picture. So David asked, um, can you remove the pups from the uh, plant while it's in bloom? And see if I can, oh gosh, that reflection. You can kind of see, look at all that. He's got two flowers. One is blooming already. And then a lot of pups on there. And that looks like he topped it. So that's a good example of what I was just talking about right there. Am I right, Dave? Did you top that plant and that's new growth where uh, where it was coming in? Where are you? Let's see what he says. Um, but as far as taking the pups off while you have a, while something's in bloom, there's a chance it can disturb, you know, the, the bloom cycle, but there's also a chance that, that taking those baby plants off of them off of the main plant um, will help to redirect any uh, energy that's being uh, used by the flower to grow back into that plant. So, you know, you can leave them on, you can cut the flowers, you can, I mean, I would just kind of leave it. Everybody looks really happy. Uh, it's a really pretty plant. It's putting on a show for you. Real quick. Yeah, the top leaves. Okay, so again, this picture where we were talking about um, topping a succulent, leave the base in place and then all this new growth will come in along around the stem. Really awesome. I think that's one of the reasons why uh, succulents are just so impressive. Um, let's see. Yeah, you're welcome, Dave. Okay, okay, let's go back up to, mm -hmm. Hannah Lay. She's in, or they're in Central California. It was 106 yesterday. Two giant shade cloths to protect our succulents because they tend to suffer in this brutal dry heat. That's a great idea. Um, I have no idea where I would put a shade cloth personally, but I could definitely use them on the west side of my house. And again, the dry heat, you know, just keep keep it's good that you have the shade because if you do get any of that extra rain like certain parts of california have been getting um the shade class will help keep them from getting burned or too hot the following day so that's what i was going to say about um sheila had asked i was thinking like maybe you can put fans on the uh some of your pots if that's convenient the electric fan to help in that help the uh, dirt evaporate and move the air around um, the West Texas floods. Hello from hot Greece, volume K says. See, I think it's either really hot or cold right now. This is a funny time of year around the world. Angelique asked about uh, if the LED lights can uh, affect your eyes. Um, white true color version. 
I've never heard about that, but I can see why the colored ones would like um, just really mess you up. Um, I, I can't, I can't see them. They're like just seeing everything and it's like pink or purple is, um, I can't do that for too long. It starts to drive me crazy, but I haven't had any issue with either the fluorescence or the LED, uh, the white lights that I have, but do keep looking into that and I'll keep an eye out for, um, any kind of reports on that? Hey, Holly in the UK. I was just talking about uh, the weather there being weird, cold, rainy for summertime. Um, Bronco asked, "How fast should the water drain? Like when he's making, it, they're making their soil. Um, how fast should it go through?" Uh, I mean, that's hard to say. That's, that's really hard to say. Um, because it, you know, it just depends on the size of the pot and the plants and all kinds of other things. But, um, and you don't always have to water it until it goes through. So, um, I'm sorry. I really kind of don't know that, that question is kind of stumping me. Um, but that's a good way to tell if your soil, how fast draining it is, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, sorry, I'm looking back to see. Hello, questions. Hannah Leigh Witt asks, when you top a plant, do you need to leave a few leaves? I think it's helpful to help the plant um, grow, photosynthesize, and you know, if you can leave any leaves in place, yes. Serge asked, hi Serge, um, what should you do if you have elongated babies that didn't get enough light? Just slowly start introducing them into more light and they'll get bigger and down the road you may want to top them if the stems are too spindly. Um, yeah, just more light, slowly. It's happened to me before and the plants turn out like really nice. A lot of times when that happens, it's, you know, it's kind of a natural to the, to the plant, like the graptopetal and paraguayans for them to have like longer necks, even on the babies than, um, or longer stems than, uh, than others like a loba. Hi Emma. Hi Heather. Have I used a solar powered fan? Kate in Austin, Texas asks. Now my fans don't, I just, I have two fans in the garage um, running like all the time, literally 24 seven since April. Um, they're, you know, they're, it's negligible and it's worth, it's worth the trade. I, I'm sure it doesn't take up too much uh, electricity. And some of you guys are telling me about some of your new acquirements. Hanale got a Buddhist temple. I've never had one of those because crassulas and humidity, a lot of them don't do really well. I'm kind of scared. Uh, but if I can get it, I'm working on a setup indoors with these LED lights I got. Because um, they do get hot. There's some that have like built-in fans, the LED lights. But um, these don't and it keeps it quieter. But um, <clears throat> I can have had it in my garage and it's already hot enough in there. And that, that was definitely like, helped <laughs> make it hotter. So I'm going to try and like hang them in somewhere in like my kitchen or something. I don't know. We'll just We'll see what happens. But then I would try some of the trickier plants that are more affected by humidity. Sorry, there's a wasp. Um, I do have a string of dolphins. I got one strand and I've propagated it, cut it in half, and um, it's doing really well. Um, I was really surprised at how easily it rooted. Um, I did, I let it dry for a few days and then I, I water rooted the string of dolphins. So I think that would work for a lot of the string of plants. Um, <clears throat> but then when you're transferring a water rooted succulent to dirt, you have to remember like those roots are not soil ready. So 
A, you have to water it a little bit more, um, but still watch out for root rot. B, it's really only a good procedure in my experience, okay? Um, if you have a plant that's just really suffering and it you, you're afraid it's not going to be able to like, it doesn't have enough energy or it's not hydrated enough to put out new roots if you're planning on cutting it or propagating it, um, you can plump it up basically with some with, with a, a water root therapy and uh, it, it gives it a better chance of you know being transplanted or putting out uh, hard roots, dirt roots. I don't know what the technical term is if there is one for water roots versus soil roots. I hope that makes sense. Let's see what goes. <laughs> Emily, you got a lot of plants. Oh, okay. String of watermelons. I've never had that. I would need to look that up. Because there's so many strings of string of turtles, which don't seem very succulent. Gail um, asked about dunks caps. I bought one pot and they did okay for a while. And again, they're they're pretty picky about the heat and humidity. And that was back kind of when I first started. And um, I haven't really tried it again. I think, oh, my sister-in-law has some. She did have some, I'm not sure if she still does. And they were doing really well for her. I'm just so jealous of her plants sometimes. She, like breaks all the rules and they do amazing. She has them in west facing, full sun, full rain, no shade, and um, just forgets about them. But they do great. Oh, sorry, I have a sip of water. Read back over these comments real quick. Mm. Let's see, I'll know once this video is over, it'll take a second. Uh, you can go back and um, watch it and then the live chat replay will appear, but it does take a minute for it to show up. I was working, uh, trying to figure out yesterday what was going on and I thought it didn't have any replay and I was getting all upset because what's the point if we can't see what everyone's saying, but um, it, it, it eventually appears. Um. Yeah, Holly, planting succulents in the ground in Pennsylvania. Um, you know, there's a few that you should experiment with. Um, pretty much any Semper Vivum variety should be okay. Agaves, uh, you just want to look at, look up cold, cold hardy succulents and then like, you know, look at all the neighbors, um, see what's doing well for them when it's, you know, during winter. And then of course, um, there's a better chance of, of them surviving if they're dry. So if you have a place that you can protect from rain outside in the ground, yeah, I, I think I think it's worth a try, you know? Don't, ex don't spend too much on it or expect too much out of it, but um, you know it's possible with, with some of them, even some cactus. Um, like the South American varieties, or the, those that are native to like the, uh, you know, colder regions in South America. You should uh, experiment with those. Yeah, you know, just takes a little bit of, uh, there's a lot of stuff I can't keep here because they like it cold. And um, even if I tried, you know, I know I would be disappointed. So I kind of just try once and then, you know, <laughs> let go. Cindy asks, let's say, just gonna grow some succulents from seeds. That's fun. Is it a good idea? to put stones in the bottom of the container. No, just, just put your regular succulent dirt, fill it up, and then leave leave a little bit of room on top, okay? And then take a, a sifter, like a flower sifter or something, and then sift off. Um, I would actually water that soil first before you sift, okay? We haven't put the seeds in yet. Sift off a, about a quarter inch layer of, um, <laughs> See, I'm, I'm making soft sand. Um, go watch my succulent, uh, the seed videos. I have a lot of fun making soft sand. Um, and you wanna sift that soft sand on top, okay? And then mist that, because if you try and pour water into it, it's gonna just go everywhere. Mist that soil with a little spray bottle 
and um, get it all nice and wet and then put your seeds directly on top. Um, some of them are big enough and you can bury them a little bit, but on the little super tiny seeds, you might as you just put them on top of the dirt and then cover them and um, just water as needed. Cover them with plastic. Got to keep them wet or moist. Hold on. I'm okay. Hanalei asked, do all succulent flowers have seeds? Um, if they're pollinated, yes, just like with any other plant. Um, a, a lot of them have to be uh, cross-pollinated, meaning they're self-sterile. That means that, you know, a bee can't go from one flower to the next on the same plant. Um, it has to have a totally different plant for that to pollinate. And that's to, you know, that's a whole other story, but I think it's really cool why, and it's important, and it helps um, breed, you know, they're breeding stronger plants, they're being self-selective, and um, breeding out competition, kind of. Long story short. Emma asks, what is your favorite plant and why? That is like the hardest question ever. Uh, I mean, it changes, but I have... No, I can't answer that question. <laughs> if you maybe top 10, talk about that sometime. I really love plants that do well for me here. I love my aloe. Let me see if I can turn this and you guys can see it. Probably not. You probably won't be able to see it. Over there. The thing is taller than me. And I really love it because I got it from my mom and um, it's done amazing here. And I've had to pull it, moved it th to three different houses twice. I had to dig it up out of the ground. Um, when I moved here, I it had just finished flowering and I left that stalk in place so I could like carry it. Um, I don't think I would have been able to do that otherwise. And then I think this is the first bloom since we moved here. And it's amazing. It's bigger than it's ever been. I've gotten seeds from that guy before. And um, I'm going to show you the seedling real quick. Hold on. This is a seedling that's like two years old from that aloe maculata over there. And then there's some others in there that are the same age. Hold on, I know this is awkward and like shaking. Um, like these are the same age as that big buster in the middle. And um, don't ask me why, one of them decided to just go like gigantic form while the others, you know, they, they're, they're a decent size for, for the age of a succulent. Um, yeah, this is, this may be one of my favorite plants, if I had to, if I had to choose one. Probably this this big seedling right here. And I think that's like a eight inch, no, 10 inch pot, I think, or bigger. Let's see. Another. It's got these spots on it, and I'm not sure if it's like water damage or something else, so I need to research that. I don't want anything to happen to this baby. That was Emma. Now we're down to <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading back through making sure you know I'm not frozen. Um, basic tips, Leovi asks for basic tips for summer in the hot sun, preventative measures for burning socks, uh, keep them out of direct sun. Um, you need to anticipate when the sun is gonna be, where it's gonna be at certain times of the year, it will change. So um, they're probably gonna have to be moving your pots around a lot. Uh, like I moved everything from the west side of my house to the east side since moving in here because I, w I didn't realize how much how bright that was going to be and I burnt some plants. So. 
pretty ticked with myself about. <laughs> Heather V says she's in Maryland. Oh, that's right, uh, Gail. Uh, the paddle type cactus work there. Um, tons of neighbors' yards and they bloom. And I think what that is, my friend uh, Kathy talked about her in uh, North Carolina sent me some hers. And I think it's called Apuncha Humafusa. Humafusa, something like that. Um, and they, they do well. And if they die off, they come back. Um, so there's something you could try. Half-closed. Hannah Lee asks, why do simps go into like a half-closed mode, like umbrella? Typically, when a when a succulent like that, a uh, rosette spreads its leaves down, um, it's trying to either, there's a few things, um, it's trying to expose more surface area, right? Like to the leaves to catch more light. Um, I don't think it'd be from overwatering. Really, only you know how often you water, but um, I don't know. I think I think it probably comes down to light in your situation. <sighs> You're welcome, Cindy. Yeah, I'm all my other big yellow. <laughs> Love it. Hi, Rhonda. Hi, Virid. Hi. Who else did I miss? MB and Martins, what's the best way to ship succulents? Um, when I've sent them, you know, always, you always use priority because they are, they come insured and they get there a lot faster. And I think it makes a, a you know, post, post, postal workers uh, take a little more care of it, knowing that if there's anything wrong with it, that it has insurance on it. Um, as far as packing material goes, um, Paper, newspaper, you can put some peanuts down in the box. You don't want to use anything plastic. Don't wrap them in plastic bags, nothing like that. Uh, and then, great. <laughs> Getting back, making sure I didn't miss anybody. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Another email. It's so dark. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. But this is a picture Gail sent me. She got a new spiralis cactus and some other fun stuff. From Arizona, I believe. They're so pretty. Have a good day, Value. Thanks, Donna. I think I missed somebody's question up here. I'm just scrolling up to see. Feel free, just drop your questions down there. If you want to send me pictures, um, you can tweet them to me. You can email me, getitsucksforyou.com. I should check and see if anybody sent me anything. If you do, let me know in the, in the chat. Mm. Ooh, there was a big heron that just flew by. I get so distracted outside by all these critters. That was awesome. Something with the light. There we go. Panel A, does your husband appreciate your plants? Um, not as much as I'd like him to. You know, now that I have everyone else to talk to about them, you know, in the beginning I was like, oh, just talking to him so much about it. Like it's, you know, bless his heart. Tried to act interested for a little while, but, um, you know, one-way conversations are never really that fun. This is you know, kind of one way. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, I think he appreciates the fact that um, I found something that I love. He's gotten me some really great plants before. I'm really easy to shop for. Um, you know, he tries. <laughs> And be in Martin. So the second one that stretches out a lot, make more leaves so you can propagate more leaves. Not really. Um, being etoliated means uh, there's two, there's more space in between the leaves. So uh, the growth isn't as compact, which to me, you know, 
just because they're getting taller doesn't mean they're making more leaves. So, uh, yeah, you'll you still, you know, you, mm, sorry, I'm kind of like stumped by that question because no, <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I'm getting too hot, you guys. Hold on. Oh, yeah, you remember that Tupperware lid to fan myself with? I shouldn't. It was nice yesterday here. It was nice the day before. And then you can tell it's starting to warm back up. But I was, I'm, I'm grateful for the little brief break in the heat that we did have. Damien asked, do you recommend my succulents to be in this Texas heat or should I put them in the shade? Um, they, I mean, you need to give them as much light as you can without it being direct sun. And um, so most of them, some of them, as far as what a shade mean is that uh, they can, they see the sky still basically. Then if so, um, some of them are fine with that. Um, but remember, if they're in the shade and you're watering frequently and feeding them during the growing season, um, they you know tend to become exfoliated. So stick with the ones like the you know huortias and aloes and stuff like that um, are better off for like a less sun location. Well, I think I've answered everyone's questions and this was a really great kind of practice for me again to get back into doing the live videos. Um, and I'm going to come up with some ideas and maybe do another one over the weekend. But um, you know, we've got that community page on my YouTube channel. Um, we'll go over there and see what, uh, maybe do a poll on, or, you know, just put it out there, see what topics you guys would like, like each other's, you know, comment. So I know which one is, you know, most popular, that kind of thing. <sighs> yeah, I think this went well. Um, really appreciate you guys coming to hang out. And if I miss anybody's questions or didn't say hello, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to getting getting in the groove with this thing. Thanks, Dave and Stacy. Y'all, y'all are awesome. Daisy, you're so sweet. Okay, guys, signing off. Happy growing. See y'all soon.